What's that? It's a record cleaner. I thought you already had one of those. Oh, I do. But this one here is automatic. Wait. Record Doctor 10? Did I miss something? Where was the 7, 8, or even the 9? And this is fully automatic. But I've been bamboozled. I've been framed. Framed? Just go with me on this. I had to take out my frustrations somehow. I needed to break something. No. Yes. Now, that was all somewhat based on a true story, except, well, maybe the hammer bit. I kind of improvised that. I didn't really, well, I did break a cassette, but I didn't expect it to blow up the way it did. But anyway, I did buy the Project VCE2 just a few months ago, and I did so because I wanted an automated or an automatic solution to my record cleaning process. I've been using the Record Doctor 6 for you know a few years now, love this, but it was getting a little bit tiring turning the manual knob here. I know I can be a bit lazy, which is going to be a recurring theme in this particular episode. But had I known that the folks at Record Doctor were going to come out with a automatic solution, I'd have waited. I think this guy right here, the Record Doctor 10, came out maybe one or two months after I purchased the Project VCE2. Now, not only is this an automatic solution where it spins the record itself, but it actually cleans both sides at the same time, which is huge. That is a quantum leap in design from the Record Doctor 6 to the Record Doctor 10, which is probably why they skipped 7, 8, and 9, I'm assuming. Now, when you compare the two, they look an awful lot alike, except for the fact that the Record Doctor 10 is a little bit bigger, and I would assume that's because of the more powerful vacuum inside of it and the work it has to do, as well as the direct drive that's housed within, within the enclosure. Speaking of the enclosures, the finishes are about the same. This also comes in glossy black, from what I understand. The clamps that cover the labels, these are pretty much the same thing, except this one screws on and this one just sets on. Other similarities has to do with, oh, the sweeper strips. So on the lower vacuum on both, you'll notice the Record Doctor 10 is a little bit taller as far as the vacuum goes, but the sweeper strips themselves are interchangeable. So if you do have the Record Doctor 6 and you have extra sweeper strips and you end up purchasing the Record Doctor 10 at some point, you can use those sweeper strips on the Record Doctor 10, which is kind of cool. One other thing, which is somewhat the same, is the proprietary fluid record cleaning solution that Record Doctor supplies with their units. I don't know what the ingredients are, and typically if I don't know the ingredients of a, of a solution that's going on the records, I use my own. But I did try this one, and it, it works very well as an emulsifier and a degreaser, and it spreads exceptionally well on top of the record too, which you'll see when I go through a demo in just a couple minutes. And that's about where the similarities end. I think I mentioned that the Record Doctor 10 has a direct drive which spins the record both clockwise and counterclockwise. But the other big difference is right here, if you can see this, is the upper vacuum arm which connects to the Record Doctor 10 in its little slot here. That's the huge difference. Uh, another smaller difference has to do with the brush. Now, the Record Doctor 6 came with the Clean Sweep uh, Record Doctor brush, which is a nylon handle, nylon bristles. And I've always, this is probably my favorite record brush. I use it for cleaning. I use it for brushing off debris before cleaning, before and after. Great brush. The Record Doctor 10, they did change it, and now they're going with a goat hair brush, which has a wooden handle. Still works great. Goat hair will, and I think this is inherent with goat hair brushes, sometimes the strands will come out. I noticed that with the project because that also has a goat hair brush. So I do find myself going back to the clean sweep when I'm spreading the fluid. Now, why don't we just go straight to how this thing works? Now, if you're familiar with the Record Doctor 6, there's really not much of a learning curve here. You still, you know, place the record on the platter and spread the fluid around using the brush. And you can turn on the motor to help with the spreading, but really only on the first side, because when you flip it, it comes into contact with that sweeper strip. So here you have to spread it around. Now, the top clamp looks just like the Record Doctor 6's, but it screws on. So 
After you've spread the fluid on both sides, it's only a matter of screwing the clamp down. I did find before you start the vacuum that you do need to make sure it's screwed down really well or it won't overcome the suction from the dual vacuums that are being employed. And I'm sure that this was an engineering conundrum. The vacuums are pretty strong and I found that they are stronger than the project, even stronger than the Record Doctor 6. And it makes sense because there's two of them. Putting vacuums on the top and the bottom means having a motor that's strong enough and slow enough for them to do their job and to also turn the record. So ensuring that that clamp is tight is key. So now on to the fun part. The upper vacuum arm slips into a groove, which you can't see, but it does allow the arm to be swung onto the record when you're ready to clean. So it's as simple as putting it in place, switching on the vacuum and rotating the platter. I give it a couple rotations in one direction and then the same in the other direction just so I can get all of that gunk up. And I'm not sure how well this comes across, but it completely removes that fluid. And when you're done, just turn off the vacuum and the upper arm pops up. Now the Record Doctor is designed to be a one and done solution, and it is. If you've been following me, you'll know I always give my records a final rinse in the spin clean without any cleaner. And the Record Doctor makes that easier too. After a few spins in the spin clean, I just drop it on the platter, screw the clamp in place, and let it do its thing. It definitely beats my old processes. And the other thing I'm impressed with is how well this thing cleans. I've always thought the Record Doctor 6 vacuum was one of the better ones out there because it always cleaned well and didn't leave any residue. The 10 appears to be just as powerful, if not more so. There's no residue left, and once it's cleaned, I can slip it immediately into a protective sleeve. Now, I wasn't kidding earlier. If I had known that the folks at Record Doctor were going to come out with an all-automatic solution like the Record Doctor 10, I would have waited. I wouldn't have bought the Project. And that's not a dig against Project. It's a great device, a great machine. I just really like this one. I wish they had told me this was coming out, but they couldn't have known I was looking for it. Regardless, would I change anything about the Record Doctor 10? Well, a couple things. One I already mentioned, I still prefer the Clean Sweep brush. The goat hair brush that comes with the Record Doctor 10 is supposed to have anti-static properties, but with a wet cleaning solution, you really don't have to worry about static, at least not during the cleaning itself. Water and static just isn't a thing. And if it is, I'm sure there's somebody out there that will correct me. What else would I change? Only one other thing, and this has it's not a design flaw. This is because I'm clumsy and it's this, the metal screw right here. The only reason that I would change that is like I said, I'm clumsy and I can see someday turning the record over, flipping it over to put it on, not paying attention, maybe being tired from cleaning 50 records or something and then scraping it right across that metal screw. Now, I don't know what you do about that. I mean, you do have to screw this on. And if they went with a plastic screw, I don't think that would work as well because the plastic would probably get worn down over time and then it would lose the ability to clamp. So I'm not an engineer. I'm just calling it out for maybe a future iteration. Still, it's not a problem. This is really just me. Now, those are a couple minor things. It's really... I love this machine. I also, you know, the geek in me also loves the fact that when this upper arm connects with the record and you stop the vacuum, that it pops up at the end. Yeah, I don't know, it's the little things. Oh, speaking of little things, there's another thing that comes with the Record Doctor, actually, I'm sorry, doesn't come with the Record Doctor 10. It's an optional cover, an optional leather cover, which I'll show you right here. So there you go, pretty cool, huh? One thing I do like about the fact that the, the folks at Record Doctor are constantly you know, looking at the details of their products is on the side here. The Record Doctor 10's power cord connects on the side, so they do have a little flap to accommodate it. Just you know, some little things that impress me. You know, as a slightly personal anecdote here, I clean a lot of records, I've mentioned that. And a lot of times when I'm listening to records, I'll hear, maybe it's a record I haven't listened to in a while, or one that I've recently brought home and maybe only cleaned it once and it needed a second cleaning. But as I'm listening, if I hear that a record needs to be cleaned, I jot it down and I add it to the list. So I have quite a list of records that need to be cleaned. And that list will end up growing because like I said, I'm lazy. And doing it all manually, 
going from, you know, the project to the record Dr. Six to the spin clean and then back. I mean, all of that, it gets tiring. So those records tend to pile up. This is such a time saver that the concern I have about cleaning a few records at a time is, is pretty much gone. This cuts that time down in half. I would say even more than that, maybe 60% of my time is saved by using the Record Doctor 10 when it comes to cleaning the records. Now, I'm sure somebody's thinking, really, Rick, 60%? I should probably time it to make it a more scientific observation, but it really is a time saver, and it really does clean the records well. That's one of the things, another thing I want to mention that I'm extremely impressed with, with the Record Doctor 10 over any solution I've seen so far that I've had experience with is it gets all of the fluid, the cleaning solution off of the record. I can go immediately from after I use the spin clean and get the distilled water off, I can immediately go into you know a inner protective sleeve without worrying about any residue left on the record. Oh, I don't want to forget to mention about that cover I just showed you. On the Record Doctor 10, if you have a Record Doctor 6 cover, they're not compatible and that's only because the Record Doctor 10, Record Doctor 10, say that three times fast, is bigger so the the cover for the six won't fit the ten just wanted to throw that out there if you were wondering if you have any other questions though just leave them in the comments below you know i'm always happy to answer questions and and hear what you say and have to think about things and you know if you've used the record doctor 10 or even are thinking about going from the six to the ten or have a different solution i want to hear from you as well uh, what your thoughts are and all of that so you know as always thank you for watching and until next time have a great life. Have a great week. Hit the like button because that's a lot of fun to do. <laughs> Anyways, enjoy your records and I will see you soon.